So not every CPU cooler deserves a review, but there's some that do. And this one here is another one of those. This is the Lian Li Galahead 2 Trinity Performance 360. And there's some things that are a little bit different, which might make this one an absolutely awesome cooler. But still, my question is, is it able to cool the infamously hot 3900K? Well, let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So this series comes in 360 and 240 millimeter sizes but the thing is uh, there's also different versions of this i've got the performance version which should offer like the most performance there's also the galahad 2 trinity galahad 2 trinity sl inf and white versions and black versions available but i wanted the performance version because this to me looks the nicest and hopefully uh you know will perform the best as well well it should perform the best as well literature l connect 3 and here We've got the cooler, and interestingly, one of the things I straight away realize is that the fans are pre-installed. Oh wow, that pump head is absolutely massive. If we are looking at this here, this looks very, very big, okay? It pops out like that and it is rotatable, I guess, so you can put it back in different ways. One thing is, uh, all of this cooler looks black, but the this is kind of like a like a bit of a bronzy um or brushed kind of a metal look so i'm not sure how this will fit in there you've got a few different heads um with this cool as well so depending like which type of head you like like this infinity or like different well we'll check them out in a moment one of the first things I realized is that we've got some new fans in here. These are very, very different than what I've seen before because they look very, very similar to these Fantex T30 fans. As you can see, look at the, look at the shape of these. Have they actually copied all of the Fantex? Because this looks exactly the same to the Fantex. I mean, I'll, I'll try to put the blades exactly in the same position as well. I mean, look at that. How similar are these two here? But then also, the Fantex one is slightly thicker on the side. If we, if you put this cooler on the side, then the Fantex T30 is 30 millimeters thick, but this, these performance fans here are 28 millimeters thick. And then another thing we realize is that the rad is much thicker than what we usually have so this is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, which has the infamously thick radiator, as you can see. And the Arctic is still a little bit thicker. But if we take a look at this one here, which is the Fantex Glacier 1, this is 360 millimeter radiator, then you can see that the radiator is a bit thicker on this Li and Li. So thicker radiator, thicker fans, means more performance. Now, interestingly, these fans are all connected together and there is only one cable that comes out of this one. There is the PWM connector, but also this little high speed and low speed switch. So it's low speed and high speed. And these fans should be able to go up to 3000 RPM, which is the same as Fantex T30 as well. Now, another thing is interesting that this connector here on the bottom of these tubes is like a 45 degree angle. These don't move here as much, as much as I move them around, they don't seem to move. But on the other side of the pump head block, these tubes, you can actually adjust them a little bit. There's three connectors that come from the pump head. We've got a USB 2.0 header, we've got a PWM header, and then a SATA power header. So the pump might be very, very powerful. Oh, interesting. So this is, this is interesting how these fans are connected. So these fans have like a side cover, and then you can see these fans daisy chain together, and then the cover will go on top of these. So the fans connect sideways to each other. And interestingly, these fans are still different than the Unifan P28, even though they are thicker like the P28, but these go faster than the P28, which is interesting. Okay, so this bracket that's already installed on the bump plug has um, LGA 1200 and 1700 holes. So basically you can push these screws to the sides and then 
like in and out, which is quite helpful actually. So why don't we get something here and get it installed? So this is my 13900K test bench that we tested all of the air coolers here. So let's get this one installed and see what it's like. First of all, the bottom bracket here has these little stickers. So if you take these off, you can stick it on the back of the motherboard and it will like kind of stick in there and doesn't fall off. So let's try that, pull these off, push it in there. As you can see, it holds there. Then we take these standoffs, plastic standoffs, these black ones. Um, you do have to install these standoffs the right way. So basically so that the bigger hole is on the top and smaller holes on the bottom. Now applying thermal paste is slightly different here than what I've seen before, which is interesting. So you're gonna take this little sticker out. You're gonna get two of these, so you can only use it once, I guess. You got some thermal pastes and then a spatula to spread it out. So I'm gonna do it in here. So basically we're gonna peel this protective film off from the bottom of the cooler. Then we're gonna take this little sticker that comes there. We're gonna take this sticker off and you can put that sticker back on there just like that. Okay, maybe that's not straight. Okay, that is pants. So I'm not sure if you see this, but the sticker has some ends here as well, but I actually left two of these little half hexagons on there so make sure you don't leave any of these on the bottom over there and when you peel this off from the back of this um like sticker plate that you leave all of these holes empty can you see these there so line it up like that put it over there then you take the thermal paste and you put a little squeeze in there take the spatula Okay, it's a bit of an interesting way of doing the thermal paste. What I'd still recommend is you take the thermal paste, put it on the CPU and then spread it out just like that. And now once you've done this on there, you peel the sticker off. And you're going to have this nice pattern now. So this you probably can't reuse. At least that's what they're saying. That's why you have to. You probably can put it back, but you'll probably have to bend this now. Okay, once this is on there like that, the bump, pump block is very, very heavy. I am just gonna line it up there. Interestingly, my bracket here, um, I need to make sure that these are completely pushed in on both sides, so make sure you've got no gap in there, then it's gonna line up. Okay, there is these RGB connectors here as well that you can um, add into, basically. So control the RGB through the motherboard, which would be, there's like two little holes on these sides. One of them would be just directly to the RGB connector. And then the other one is where you can daisy chain some other RGB connectors together in there. Okay, I've got the pump on to the pump header, which means that the pump is going 100% speed all the time right now. And you can a little bit hear it, but it's not that bad. But what I am curious of is how well is this going to work? Right now, the PL1 and PL2 limits are 285 watts, okay? So we're going to start with that. Let's see what happens. All right. Okay. I see. So this is definitely uh, like not throttling there. Let me put it on one more time, even though I'm doing stuff in the background. Keeps the clock speeds at about 5.3 gigahertz on all cores. And look at that, core temperatures doesn't go over 74 degrees. Wow, I've got 23 degrees in the room right now. But this is, uh, this is quite impressive. Let me see what happens if we do this. Let's see if it can actually hold on there. So we'll just open that one again. So we can, oh, 38,000 points we had before. Core temperatures there. Let me just pull this slightly down. You can see the clock speeds there, but you can see PL1, PL2 limits are maxed out now. And let's see what happens. 328 
watts and look at that okay we did thermal throttle there keeping them at 5.5 gigahertz okay but there's another thing that we can do we can switch these to high okay these were in the low settings the fans now let me see if it's any different if we sweat set them to high okay we did thermal throttle there in the end 39,221 points that's very uh, impressive still okay i believe we can get a better thermal paste application when i'm actually pasting the cpu rather than the block so we'll see if we can uh, change that thermal throttling though was only on one core one p core so it's not massive as you can see one of those is going 98 i'm gonna do the pasting again let's see if we can get even more out of this okay it's come off slowly and actually the application hasn't been that bad you can see that it's spread pretty much evenly all around some of the corners of the ihs haven't been spread out but let me see if we can put a little bit more thermal paste in there and if we can make it a little bit better let's have a look so their recommendation is basically to have tiny tiny little bit of thermal paste and then let it like spread out very very thin there is quite a thick copper block on the bottom like you can see this is like a three mil or two mil copper like just big piece of copper there my cpu is nicely uh covered now and let's try this again okay new thermal paste my version of thermal paste now let's see if that is any better 39367 by the way this is uh, my 3900k that i've done loads of testing on do you remember the air cooler video where we tested 14 air coolers now i've tested another seven uh, plus all of the like test bench of all the benchmark of this so this cpu has been hammered loads so and it's never had the contact plate so i'm guessing it's already a bit bent right and in this bent condition we're seeing this result here did you see single run of cinebench and it didn't thermal throttle all of the cores were 5.5 gigahertz so let's do this again to see if we can hit 40 as well here now oh yeah these fans really shift some air through the back of this look at this it's 325 watts constant load and we're not thermal throttling did you see that so we've done two roll runs now i'm gonna put 10 minutes on and i want to see when it's actually going to thermal throttle now with this new thermal paste application go on fans kick in yeah there we go 326 watts constant load 96 that's the third run we're not thermal throttling fourth run we're not thermal throttling i don't know if i quite believe this okay on the fifth run we thermal throttled at 330 watts but the fans are doing some kind of funny business here they didn't go 100 percent all the time but look at that we're hitting 39,000 points in all of them this is absolutely incredible absolutely amazing performance so am i happy with the performance of this oh yeah i definitely recommend this one like this performs as good as the arctic liquid freezer 2 420 millimeter one it's got more performance fans it's got a bit of a thicker radiator which means that it can hold a bit heat you know more you've got more liquid in there so it means that you know you've got more kind of thermal um what's it called thermal mass i guess so let's have a look at these different uh, top sends as well so this is kind of uh, like an infinity mirror like a circle kind of a cave in there so if we take this one off and then this if you want it to look just like white nothing nothing else just like a color obviously you can make it whatever color you want and then have this one in so you can take the lee and lee badge off basically and now you've got just like an infinity uh cave or whatever this looks really nice actually this i think is the nicest you've got like an infinity edge and like it goes deeper deeper inside that mirror really works quite nice i like this one more than this lee and lee one because just this metal around here doesn't go with anything it's like so, such a different color than all the rest but it's still cool 
In conclusion, I think this is probably so far the best cooler that's been released this year. I am absolutely loving it because it ticks all of these boxes for me. Performance, like first of all, if you've got a nice product, if you don't have performance, waste of time. Performance, they've got it. Secondly, the design. You can change these ends like this one without logo, like unbranded. It looks amazing. You've got lots of connectivity. Obviously, you've got the L Connect 3 uh, that you can use the software to connect and configure all, all sorts of things there. But if you don't want to do that, you can just use the motherboard as well and, you know, connect it there. These fans are incredible. W the only downside that you might have to look out for is the uh, thickness of the rad. Some cases, sometimes it doesn't fit the ra radiator and fan thickness, but it's still gonna be about the same thickness as you would see Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 millimeter one, but I bet this one will perform better. Well, I know it, it kind of performs better because it does have much stronger performance fans. Until you change the Liquid Freezer out to like the P12 Max fans from Arctic, you might get, you know, it starts to be a little bit similar, but this one, the design is definitely better than the Arctic one, so to me, this is a cooler to beat this year now. And you can get it in 240mm sizes as well, as well as in black and white. It's amazing, I'm loving it, and uh, what can I say? Go check it out, it, it tames the 13900K, which is just incredible. And hey, if you do want to build yourself the best bank for what created PC, you don't know which parts to use, there's actually some more links in the description below. Video series, there are four videos. Pick whichever budget you want or is close to yours, and then I'll explain everything there. Don't waste any money buying parts that don't give you performance. Go check them out there. But perhaps if you have a bit to spare, get this cooler.